my name is Christina and I wanted to make a video on hypoparathyroidism and parathyroidectomy, expectations, experience, and my personal journey throughout the process. Um, I thought it might be a special time to do so because it is July and July is Hyperparathyroidism Awareness Month. So um, I figured I'd tell you a little bit about it, uh, about my journey and kind of address some of the questions um, that I've received um, about, I had my surgery two months ago back in May of 2018 and I decided to share my story on social media and I've actually heard a lot of feedback and have gotten a lot of questions um, from people who are going through this experience, are curious to know more about it, or have family members that are experiencing um, these symptoms or hyperparathyroidism. So I'm hoping to um, create a video that answers some of your questions, maybe comforts you, or um, just as somebody that you can relate to. Um, and just a little disclaimer, I am actually a speech language pathologist. I am not an endocrinologist or surgeon. So um, any of the medical advice or um, information that I provide was something that was passed along to me through my endocrinologist or my surgeon or throughout my searches online throughout diagnosis. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get right into it. Um, basically, hyperparathyroidism is caused by we don't know what it's caused by, <laughs> but what happens is um, you have four parathyroid glands, para or behind your thyroid, and one or more of them go awry and um, turn into an adenoma or a tumor that messes up all kinds of things in your body, strips the calcium out of your bones, pumps too much parathyroid hormone into your body and makes you feel really terrible. Um, there's a lot of symptoms that can come with it. Some people are completely asymptomatic and just find it throughout routine blood tests. Um, but most often you hear people will have bone pain, fatigue, um, neuropsychiatric issues like depression and anxiety, um, digestive issues, uh, brain fog, all kinds of things like that. Um, it mainly impacts women in the um, age range of 50 to 60 or postmenopausal women. Um, obviously not all cases because I got diagnosed at 24 and had surgery at 25 and yeah, so it's just case by case, um, and if you watch Dancing with the Stars, you'll notice that one of the dancers, Alan, had it, and I believe he was 23 um, when he had his removed, so it can affect anybody, and they don't really know why, but anyway, moving on. Um, a little bit of information I really like to share is that there's not a whole lot of awareness on hyperparathyroidism. It's not the most super common um, disease out there and I've encountered a lot of other people with hyperparathyroidism that have stated that doctors want to often wait and see or watch their levels or see if they get worse and um, as my endocrinologist at the Mayo Clinic explained to me that is never an option if you have hyperparathyroidism you have hyperparathyroidism your only option is surgery and you need to get it removed as soon as you can um, because when you have these toxic levels of high calcium in your body um, and high, high levels of parathyroid hormone, it impacts your heart, your liver, your kidneys, your bones, you're susceptible to osteoporosis, um, and all kinds of problems, and it only gets worse. So if you happen to encounter a doctor that tells you they just want to wait and see, um, my personal opinion is to go and find somebody else to get a second opinion. It won't hurt um, to go and seek out somebody else because um, I have been advised otherwise as well as many other people have. Um, but just to share a little bit about my story, I, about eight months ago is when I started getting um, really, really unwell. It was kind of a slow decline that I didn't really notice was happening. I was under a lot of stress. I was in graduate school. I was very worried about exams and clinic and all of those things. And um, I really thought I felt unwell because of stress and then it slowly got very worse. Um, my main issues were digestive manifestations, which are um, common, but you don't, it's usually the first thing you hear. Most people have bone pain as that's their first sign of um, this issue, but I had a lot of stomach issues. I typically had abdominal pain from sun up to sundown and very terrible nausea and indigestion with um every single meal I ate and even sometimes when I wasn't eating. So that caused a lot of difficulties with um, my life and my work. Um, I 
it came to a point where it was um, so severe that I was really eating maybe one meal a day if I could because I couldn't eat at work because I'd feel sick and wouldn't be able to function. Um, so that was pretty crummy. I uh, lost about 20 pounds in a very short amount of time and ended up seeing many doctors throughout this process. I think in total I've probably seen about six or seven and I was misdiagnosed three times. I was told I was just stress and anxiety, um, try this pill or do yoga or go on a hike and you'll feel a lot better and just manage that. Um, but I could tell something much deeper was going on. Um, I was told maybe it was stomach ulcers. I told it was, I was told maybe it was IBS. I was told maybe it was functional dyspepsia. So nobody really had a direct answer for me. I had endoscopy, I had a colonoscopy and really the general consensus was you're probably really stressed and you know I was because I didn't feel like anybody was listening to me thankfully um, after routine blood work we found my high calcium levels which um, one thing led to another I was able to get in with endocrinology in Mayo Clinic in Phoenix and um, we did a system EB scan and were able to localize the tumor and move forward with surgery um, my tumor was um, my right superior parathyroid gland and um, it was pushing on my trachea and my esophagus so we ended up scheduling surgery 48 hours after my consult to get it out as soon as possible and then it gave me three weeks to heal up graduate college and move across the country <laughs> so it was fast and furious but I am very thankful that they were able to take care of me so quickly um, but that's a little bit about what I experienced um, I decided to post my story on social media because I realized that this disease isn't very well known, especially from just my personal experience with doctors um, missing my diagnosis. I wanted to raise awareness so other people could hear about the disease, learn to advocate for themselves, or um, see if they have a similar problem, if there's any way I can help, or just be somebody to relate to. Um, I've been asked a lot of questions, but I picked out a couple of the main ones that I've been getting. And if there's any that I don't address, um, please feel free to message me and I'd be happy to answer them in any way that I can. A lot of people have asked me what or, or how do you go about choosing a surgeon um, because this isn't the most common procedure in the world. I think it's very important to find somebody who is considered a specialist and according to some resources online, it states that you'll want to find somebody who does at minimum of 50 parathyroidectomies per year. Um, I ended up going with a general surgeon, which usually isn't something that most people would uh, recommend, but my general surgeon did about 65, if not more a year. In fact, she told me right before I came in for my consult, she did the same exact procedure on an 80 year old man who had the exact same numbers that I did. Why my numbers mirrored an 80 year old man is beyond me, but you know, stranger things have happened, I suppose. <laughs> um, so I would definitely make sure that you ask about that. Um, another important factor is to ask about um, if they monitor your levels during surgery. You want to make sure that they're not choosing to attack only the tumor that shows up on your Sesame B scan or your ultrasound because it's very possible that it's only showing one adenoma when there could be more. So um, I talked to my doctor about it and she recommended or she explained to me that what they did was they did intraoperative monitoring throughout surgery and after removing the adenoma that had shown up on my scan they looked to see if my blood levels have dropped did my calcium go back to normal um, did my parathyroid hormone go back down just to give you a general idea my calcium level was an 11.3 which is very very high <laughs> it explains why I felt so crummy and my parathyroid hormone level was I believe a 167 and it should never be above 65 so it's definitely in need of surgery in a very classic case um so i would make sure that they're an expert and see if there's a way that they make sure that they have the adenoma removed and that there isn't any others because you do have four so that gives you an opportunity to have four affected areas um luckily for me i only had one tumor or adenoma so um I was very lucky in that department. Um, a lot of other people have asked me about survival kits for surgery. Uh, what are some things that you think are a necessity? Um, what's helpful? What makes life a little bit easier post-op? Um, step number one, family member or a friend that can help you out because you might need a little bit of help the first couple of days. I was pretty independent by day, like three, four. 
um, but having a little bit of help is very, very much essential. Um, a C-neck pillow, like those travel pillows that you see people walk around at the airport with, very, very important. I would make sure to get one that has um, memory foam or microfiber, both, both of them, like nice and soft, very comfortable, because that thing did not leave my neck for like six to seven days. It went with me everywhere and really helped me in the car ride home, helped me with sleeping. Um, you, you definitely need that. Um, I would also recommend, what else would I recommend? A blanket for the car ride home. That was really helpful too. I had a blanket. Um, make sure that the clothing that you put on after surgery is very loose fitting. Uh, I definitely could have done better with that <laughs> because you do have to get dressed after you wake up. Um, I was sent home right away. As soon as I woke up, they had me out the door within an hour and a half maybe. Um, so <laughs> comfy clothes, slip on shoes. Um, it was really good. Post-op food. Um, I was able to eat as soon as I got home. Um, I did have some difficulty with thin liquids. So that's something I'd be aware of. You do have a lot of swelling uh, in the area. Um, and I felt like liquids were kind of pooling in the back of my throat. So I, I had difficulty for two, three days. Um, but you do have to make sure that you stay hydrated. So I would recommend ice chips or even freezing like Gatorade into little ice chips so you have that and you can remain hydrated and just get little bits of water at a time because gulping water was not working for me personally. Um, you'll also definitely want an ice pack and a heating pad. Um, I would say that when I woke up, I was in some pain. It wasn't horrible, but I was in some pain and um, you kind of feel like you got in a car accident and you have that whiplash because they hyperextend your neck. Um, mine was hyperextended for about two and a half hours and that was for one adenoma. So it does vary per surgeon and location and complexity of the case. But um, for having your neck extended for that long of time, I definitely needed to have a heating pad on. I also used peppermint oil on the back of my neck to help with the sore muscles. And that felt really, really good, especially when I was trying to sleep. Um, and yeah, I think that covers it for like post-op survival guide necessities that you need to have by your side. Um, also, if they gave you any instructions post-op about medications, some people end up taking Citricol. I needed Tums, um, was all that they expected me to need. So if you end up having low calcium, um, be sure to have Tums nearby. Um, and a lot of people ask me about just expectations in my experience post-op. Um, I, like I'd mentioned, I woke up in a, in some pain. Um, it wasn't anything that you couldn't manage for sure. Um, but I definitely was feeling some pain. You kind of feel like you got hit by a bus. Not a big bus, just a little bus. It was <laughs> just a little bit of pain. Um, but honestly, the second day I went to the grocery store with my family and walked around for a very short amount of time. I um, stopped by my family's hotel and grabbed dinner and I was able to handle that okay. Um, so you can definitely move around. Uh, I've heard a lot of people really um, feel energized after this procedure because a lot of the symptoms that you had before like, are immediately erased. I was eating things that I hadn't eaten in like six to eight months because my stomach wouldn't tolerate them before and then now I could. So I was really excited and I was kind of eating anything I could get my hands on. Um, but I would recommend really soft foods. Um, if you have smoothies that I would probably spoon in, um, food that doesn't take a lot of chewing for sure. Chewing was a lot more strenuous than I expected it to be. Um, things like eggs, shredded chicken, steamed vegetables, lots of popsicles and smoothies for sure. Um, I just backtracked, but Sorry, scatterbrained. There's a lot to discuss here. <laughs> but anyway, continual post-op um, expectations of what I had. Just don't overdo it because you, the first like two days, kind of what I've consistently heard, you feel all this energy, your stomach feels better, your bones aren't hurting, and you're really excited. Um, don't get too excited <laughs> because then you might end up overdoing it and kind of feeling the pain. Um, that's something consistent that I've heard from others and that I've personally experienced myself. Um, 
I would also say kind of expect to feel up and down. I didn't just have like a steady incline of feeling amazing. I'd have a couple days where I felt really good and then I'd feel not so great. I'd have a lot of energy and then I'd feel really fatigued. So just be patient with your body. Remember that you um, went through kind of a tough experience. Um, you know, it is minimally invasive, but it is invasive. So just give yourself that grace and give yourself that time. Be sure to rest. Um, sleeping, I think, was the worst part of it for the first four or five days. I was not able to lay down at all because um, I would get really, really swollen and uncomfortable and or my neck would move and I didn't like it. So I had to pretty much sit almost 90 degrees at night and um, the couch was kind of my place to be. Get that C-neck pillow on and an ice pack, rotate with heating pad and you'll be feeling pretty good. Um, make sure you are taking pain medication if you want to do that. Um, again, Tylenol worked perfectly for me. And um, I'm trying to think of anything else expectation wise. I did experience um, like some thyroiditis, a little bit of difficulty just from having my thyroid manipulated after surgery. Um, mild difficulty with breathing and um, I did have a calcium crash. Um, a lot of people have told me that they experienced this. Mine went a little bit overboard so I did end up in the ER. Um, but be sure to follow your doctor's instructions and um, keep calcium nearby. If you are experiencing um, low calcium or hypocalcemia, you'll probably feel tingling in your fingers or in your toes. Um, mine went from my fingers to my hands, arms, then it went lips, nose, entire face and eyes. So I panicked and it was very scary, but um, I was able to take 700 milligrams of um, Tums, which are straight calcium. And within 15, 20 minutes, I did feel a lot better and then was able to get my levels checked and make sure that everything else was checking out all right. And so if that does happen, just recognize that it's pretty normal. A lot of people I talk to have experienced tingling after uh, the operation. So don't worry about it. Your body's just not used to um, not having toxic levels of calcium flush throughout your blood. And it doesn't know what to do with that just yet. So give it a little while and you'll feel better. Um, People heal at different paces. I had a girl tell me that she was in Zumba one week post-op. I personally, would, there's no way I would have been able to do that, but I did go back to work, I think like day eight or nine post-op. Um, and I work with kids, I was on the floor, very interactive and I did okay. I was just a little bit fatigued, still trying to get my energy back from surgery and not being able to eat or drink a whole lot. So um, I would, I'd give myself ideally like a week and a half, but every case is different. Some people have multiple adenomas removed. Some people have part of their thyroid removed. So talk to your doctor um, and be patient with yourself for sure. Um, uh, and I, one thing I did forget to mention is if you are having uh, muscle cramps along with your tingling, that's usually when your um, calcium is getting pretty detrimentally low. And I would definitely see somebody about that. But um, You'll have post-op instructions and be able to talk with your doctor if you have any other concerns. Um, and they'll advise you whether or not they feel like you should go in to an ER or seek any assistance. But um, it really it really wasn't bad. Overall, I didn't um, find the surgery to be too scary. Um, be sure to be open with your doctor if you have any concerns. And... Um, talk to them about what's making you nervous if you're nervous or um, be really clear on the questions that you have. One of my big concerns was recurrent laryngeal nerve damage because as a speech pathologist, if I can't talk or swallow, I might be out of a job. <laughs> um, so have them address your concerns so that you feel more comfortable going in on surgery day. And um, as far as taking care of your scar post-op, I am a very wear it loud and proud kind of girl. Let's strike up a conversation and raise awareness. Um, but I still wanted to treat it as well. Um, I was told that after the bandage removal, two weeks post-op, I was allowed to put vitamin E oil, Mederma, polysporin, type of that on there. Um, vitamin E oil worked best for me and I massaged it into the scar to get rid of some of that scar tissue. Um, it's also recommended that you use a mineral-based sunscreen on your scar to prevent it from um, getting sunburnt. I had my surgery in Arizona. <laughs> I was exposed to sun, so mine's a little bit more red, plus I'm very fair. 
Um, but again, I'm also only two months post-op, so I'm sure it will fade a little bit more with time. Um, but for those of you who have it, or it's a little bit more visual, vis <laughs> hello, speech therapist, a little bit more visible, um, I say wear it loud and proud. It's a symbol of what you've been through, your self-advocacy that you had to experience to get there, and um, your pers the way you persevere going through this disease, because anybody who has it or knows somebody who has it knows that um, it'll really knock you down. So wear it loud and proud and share it with your friends to raise awareness about hyperparathyroidism. Um, but overall, yeah, the surgery really wasn't bad and um, I feel so much better having had it done um, like a week post-op. I was eating nachos. If I were to eat nachos beforehand, I think I would have been in pain for four days. Horrible, horrible pain. So it has been definitely on the up and up. Um, Def it certainly isn't quite perfect yet. I still am dealing with um, some minor stomach issues, I think because it just got to such a bad point with how severe it was, but um, certainly significantly better. And I'm feeling so much better and very thankful um, for the Mayo Clinic for the help that they've given me and um, for um, my PCP and gastro who were able to get me the blood work that helped me um, reach this diagnosis. But if you have any additional questions, I'd love to hear from you or answer them in any way that I can. Um, just remember that if you have a high calcium level or your PTH levels are high, it's not normal and you shouldn't have to wait, especially if you don't feel well and you're symptomatic. Um, advocate for yourself in any way that you can. And if there's any way that I can help you or answer any questions that you may have to make this um, an easier experience for you, I'd be more than happy to do so. Please feel free to write to me on any social media platform or um, even commenting on this video. And I really appreciate you listening to my story and I hope that it was in some way helpful to you. Uh, thank you so much and have a good day or evening. <laughs> Bye.